Hey, this is Jeff Heller, and I'm about to take you into the 2016 Buffalo Comic Con. As you can tell, there's plenty of there to satisfy all of your heat needs. Please enjoy what we have to offer and also what took place that exciting weekend. So uh, I'm Rob Dumo, and uh, I'm a penciler. Uh, right now I'm working on uh, this book right here, Kill Crazy Nympho's Attack, with uh, Daniel Way and the Suska Twins. Uh, hopefully I should be completed uh, by the end of the year here. Um, I'm also the um, art director for Broken Icon Comics, uh, which is an indie publisher out of West Virginia, and I also do a book uh, called Eccentrics for them. Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Ash Masco, and this is Ashley Winter. And we do a comic book called Scoriers. We're here at Buffalo Comic Con. Ashley's working on some artwork. What are you working on right now? I'm drawing a Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn sketch cover. <laughs> well, I guess this is a sketch. This is just a commission. Yep. It looks beautiful. Uh, again, we do the Scoriers comic. I'm the writer. She's the artist. Check out our work here, Scoriers.com. We got a card game coming out on Kickstarter next month. And Ashley, what are you doing? Working all the time. I'm working on the next Warriors issue, and I've got some other variant covers coming up. Um, you just did, you just did a Harley Quinn cover, right? I did. I did my first Harley Quinn variant for the Rebirth series. That's awesome. Well, yeah, we're here selling prints, selling comics, and hanging out in Buffalo. Hi, Buffalo. Graham Nolan here. Uh, I'm at the Buffalo Comic Con uh, as a guest. Uh, doing sketches and uh, selling posters and stuff like that. Um, I'm supposed to talk about how I started my career. Uh, I went to the Joe Kubert School. Um, one of my teachers bought my first uh, uh, 
story that I ever did for a classroom project uh, and, and sold it to, uh, what was the name of that book? New Talent Showcase for DC Comics, and that was 33 years ago. Um, so I've been doing it ever since. Um, probably most people know me as the uh, co-creator and designer of the Batman villain Bane. I uh, had a long run on Detective Comics, illustrating Batman and his stories. Uh, and I'm currently working on a secret project for DC Comics, which I can't talk about, so there. Hi there, I'm Mike Ruth. I'm uh, happy to be back here in Buffalo at the Buffalo Comic Con. I uh, had a great time last year, and it's awesome to see some familiar faces again. Uh, I'm here just basically doing some sketches for people, and I've got some of my comics that I've worked on. I've also got a couple of copies of my own comic, Widow's Wake, which is just the sketchbook version of the actual comic, which is coming out soon, um, 2017. Well, I've been invited for the first time to Buffalo Comic Con as a, a special guest, and uh, I'm uh, uh, an animator, I'm an illustrator, and uh, I'm one of the character designers from uh, the Disney show Gargoyles. And uh, I'm also a, uh, a launch artist, so I help launch uh, um, Marvel and DC Comics pieces for the different movies and TV series. And I do that exclusively through Comic-Cons. Oh, what are you currently working on? Uh, just uh, some of the exclusive stuff uh, mm -hmm. to help launch pieces. Um, and uh, I'm doing some more Gargoyle lithographs. Um, uh, I also do a lot of teaching and teach and mentor children and students mm -hmm. through workshops. So, uh, how did uh, now? Is this your first time at in Buffalo or at the Buffalo Comic Con? It's it's my first time at the Buffalo Comic Con, mm -hmm. but I'm from Toronto, Canada. So, for me, it's uh, I've I've been coming to Buffalo for the last I don't know 30 years. Are you happy? How uh, how do you how do you feel like this has been like so far? Well, I can honestly tell you, the fans of Buffalo, New York, are awesome, and uh, I do a lot of retro style art, so I know that the fans uh, here in Buffalo love that kind of work and love that kind of uh, era. So uh, I do have quite a fan base here in Buffalo from doing collectible shows and different uh, events like that, but it's quite an honor to come to a bigger show like the Buffalo Comic Con. Awesome. Hey, Buffalo Comic Con, Chad and Wiki here, vintage art. Do a lot of commission work, a lot of vintage stuff. of what I'm going to do starts right here. It literally starts right here with the drawing mark. If it looks like Kelly, then that's a good thing. We, want it, we definitely want it to look like her. Well, there's, yeah, there's something else I want to tell you about, and that is uh, uh, this medium here is just, it's just a wonderful medium. I, I just love the color of this character. Another thing, you're not going to see a lot of details start off in the beginning. You're going to see broad things applied broadly and loosely, but accurately. That's that's the other trick. And for natural objects, uh, I'm going to go with this 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 gray color right here. It's literally and it's literally gray. See how that's starting to come about there? It's really a bizarre thing, and it's it's endlessly fun. It's endlessly challenging, and it's endlessly interesting to try to do. The smartest thing that any artist does at some point is to stand back. And uh, 
<coughs> if I'm smart, and I'm not saying I'm going to be, I often relapse on the non smart but uh, if I'm smart, I'm going to at some point step back and see. I'm going from one side to the other symmetrical, do you think very symmetrical? This is part of the blocking stage. There's no sense of finish that's going to be taking place at this moment, but that comes later on. My old teacher told me that painting is hard enough and trying to do everything at once. So you don't try to do everything at once, you, you do it in stages. This takes a lifetime to learn this stuff. But a lifetime is what we all have, if we're lucky to do what we want to do with it. And I've always, this is what I've always wanted to do with it. So I'm going to go up to this. Let's get out the mall strip, right? <laughs> Let's measure down here. And if I measure down, I'm a little off here. So I'm going to correct it. I'm going to measure down. So her hand is actually way out here. And that's how I'm going to block in her hand. And it's probably going to look real from a very early, um, an early point, which is good. That's what you want. I haven't seen this measurement. Uh, my, um, my stuff is a little off here. Who knows how it gets off? I'm never, never quite sure myself, but I'm going to correct it. But I'm going to put the, the logo in here. I think this is the right color for the logo. Basically, you work with you work with a piece that's about an inch long, and you just slide it on the flat end. If it has a flat end, just do uh, with the block with the right color. You can modify things later. And explore things. Take time off and just um, find out what, what you think you're here for. Uh, and and taking that year off just changed my life. I went. I, Moved out of the home, I went to this filthy boarding school where these bums were hanging out and stuff, and these drug addicts. And I learned all about the, I learned about things, about all these different kind of different kinds of people. Hi again. As you're about to see, Quinn City Bookstore has got a great new TV show planned. It airs every Saturday on WBBZ Channel 5 at 6.30 p.m. I will be your host, introducing you to a lot of cool and unique things within this culture. The show will cover all of your needs, and it's called Queen City Heat TV.
Welcome to 10 Questions About Comics. I'm Tom Savini, your host, bringing you a segment of the show from Queen City Bookstore that's going to talk about different questions relating to comic books. With me today is Dwayne Muth. How are you doing? Dwayne, thanks for joining me. We're okay. going to go over 10 questions on the Silver Age of comics today. You ready? Yes. All right. Let's start off with when did the Silver Age begin? 1956, the very Ellen Flash. Okay. With his debut in Showcase yes. Comics number four? Yeah, Showcase number four, and eventually uh, he took over the Jay Garrick run. Showcase four is widely accepted as the start of a, a new yes. era of comic book yes. publishing. Cool. Who were the primary companies at work during the Silver Age of comics? DC and Marvel. Pretty much they were they they're, were they're the, the headliners. They're yeah. they, they still are, you know. It's, there's a lot of other things changed in the background, but they're, they're the, they run the show. Yeah, Showcase 4 published about 1956. Uh, Marvel entered the, the game... Late 50s, 1958, but mostly with the Fantastic Four, number one, 1961. Number one, 1961. And Marvel uh, actually grew out of Atlas, Timely, and some other companies that were around and and started the the company under the name Marvel with FF number one yes. in 61. Cool. Uh, what storytelling elements came into Silver Age, Marvel in specific, that defined uh, the Silver Age? Character driven, uh, using real cities like New York City instead of Metropolis or Gotham City. Right. The world outside your window. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, and and the characters had, had problems that were a little different from DC characters. Yeah, they didn't like each other most of the time. They fight, argue, and then come together and... And some of them were downright losers. Yeah. Or had problems in, in the real world or in their secret identities. Yes, Peter Parker. You know, he's trying to help his aunt out with uh, the rent and yeah. stuff like that. All in an effort to make the characters more relatable to the people who were reading yeah. the books. Yeah. Yeah. Um, who were the primary characters? You talked about a couple with, uh, with Spider-Man, with Daredevil, and with The Flash. Uh, who else were, were the characters in Silver Age comics? Well, Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman had continued on from the Golden Age. They're like the three books that I can think of off the top of my head that just kept going even though other books had stopped and restarted or rebooted. Okay. And who were DC uh, Comics' primary characters besides Superman, Wonder Woman, and the Batman? Uh, the, the Flash, Green Lantern, uh, Hawk, Hawkman, the Atom, the uh, Green Arrow, Martian Manhunter. Yep. They're all Justice League characters. And a whole slew of characters who had, who had appeared in some way in Golden Age Comics but got revived or refurbished for the Silver Age. Yeah, Earth-1, the Earth-1, Earth-2, six. Section, yeah. We'll get to that in a minute. We're jumping okay. ahead on questions okay. here, but uh, but that's okay. Besides superheroes, what other genres were represented in Silver Age westerns, comics? Westerns, um, uh, cowboy, or um, it is westerns, um, war comics, love comics. It, they had a lot of uh, detective kind of like non-costume stuff. DC did a lot of that. Right. A lot of sci-fi comics. Yeah, Marvel did the sci-fi. And, and, and DC, DC was in there too with Adam uh, Strange, yeah, and Mystery in Space, and yes. Strange Adventures. Yeah, Space Ranger you mentioned. Yeah, uh, Archie had been publishing pretty solidly uh, for yes. a whole different side of the market than the superheroes were appealing to. Yeah, Archie, Archie did all kinds of things. Did any cr characters make the crossover within the stories from the Golden Age of comics into the Silver Age? Yeah, Captain America did. With um, they found him in the ice. Found uh, him in the ice. And um, the. Uh, and where did Submariner uh, spend? Na Namor, there? he was uh, always getting amnesia. The Human Torch in issue four of their book gives him a shave. So Bring Marvel uh, brought these characters through from World War II <laughs> into the, what was then the, the, the contemporary day mm -hmm. through plot elements. Yes. DC picked a whole different way to go about uh, relating to those Golden Age characters, science fiction parallel world plot device. Yeah, they, every year the Justice League, the Justice Society would meet up after that. Uh, besides, we've been talking about Marvel and DC Comics quite a bit. What other companies were publishing during the Silver Age? Golden Key, Dell, Charlton. Charlton had a variety of books. Um, I want to throw Tower Comics Tower, out there yes, and yeah, Thunder yeah. Agents. Wally Wood's fantastic yeah. work. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. short and sweet. MLJ, the uh, the Archie superhero line. The Mighty Crusaders. With the Mighty Crusaders, yes. some very corny stuff that played off the, the, the Camp Batman TV show of the Silver Age. Okay. Mid 60s, yeah. Yep. Um, who are some of the popular creators writing and drawing during the Silver well, Age? From uh, DC, it was Gardner Fox, John Broome, uh, shepherded by uh, Julie Schwartz. Yeah. And uh, two very powerful editors, Schwartz and Mort Weisinger, who yeah, was leading Mort Weisinger Superman on Superman, Cat. yes, yes. And in Marvel, it two was, names uh, that come to mind. Jack Kirby, Steve Ditko, Stan Lee. Stan yeah. gets enough props. <laughs> you know, th th that's enough topic for a whole ten questions on itself. Yes, but, uh, that's yeah, funny. We'll get to that. Uh, 
Who was the top company between Marvel and DC? Well, DC in the beginning had uh, more of a uh, market space for their racks or their books, and Marvel, 1965 on, just just barreled through, and DC it had to play catch up for years and years. 1980. I think something we're going to see in the Bronze Age is uh, Marvel having more of the the critique or the the fan feedback as far as being the better company, uh, and seeing that shift uh, as we move into the Bronze Age. Uh, which brings us to the last question. How did the Silver Age end? Well, as I said, uh, Aquaman, uh, it was an Aquaman story in Adventure Comics where he fights Aqualad and it's the whole thing where Black Manta kills off uh, Arthur Curry that's Jr. That's really and interesting. That, that, I mean, that, that, that's not a story that, that I've there, often there, heard. There are other ones. I go with the Gwen Stacy, Conan I, number one. I tend to see the end of the Silver Age with the death of Gwen Stacy in Amazing mm -hmm. Spider-Man 121. Yeah, that one just, it just, I don't know, it just came out of nowhere. I think whatever uh, we determine it, it would be the end of the Silver Age, and again, it's, it's open for discussion. Um, I think most people see it as a story kind of ending rather than something visible in the market or in the publishing world itself. It, 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 the Silver Age ended when stories took a different turn. It started um, killing characters off. And, exactly. And just changing things, and making them more a little more, uh, instead of just like plot-driven, like DC was plot-driven, it became more like Marvel where they were trying to get and they and they had they had, they had to do that. They had to, to keep keep in business. They had to do that yep. and respond to the changing market. Yeah, Dwayne, thanks for joining me today, and thank all of you. We'll see you again in our next episode. In upcoming episodes, we will introduce brand new segments covering everything from comic books to cosplay, movie making, horror, of course. Hello, I'm Johnny McCobb, and this is Red Ink. This is our weekly installment where we will talk about and break down horror comics in today's contemporary comic book market. Welcome to the Macabre and Vile Show. I'm your host, Johnny Macabre. With me, as ever, is my lovely cohort, Vile. She's quite harmless, I assure you. Just whatever you do, don't move your fingers like a small wounded animal. She can be a little... bitey. And we'll have guests of all geek genres. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, I got the DVD, yeah. Oh, cool.
This is Jeff Heller, over and out.